All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to be trying to uh, trying something different and uh, see if this camera battery lasts long enough and uh, if it works. Um, today, what I have is a brand new purchase off eBay. It's a 3M Cantata cartridge, and I thought I should open it up, see what it looks like, and uh, thought you guys might be interested. So here we go. And uh, here we go. This is a brand well, new to me, brand new uh, Melodic uh, Melodic Library Series 2 266. I know I have a rhythmic cartridge, so let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. The box seems to be in pretty good shape. And uh, I need some TLC. As you can see, the uh, tapes have become you know misaligned it looks like the braking mechanism is uh, no longer functional and uh, but tape appears to be intact so let's open it up and see what kind of mess is inside and uh, what awaits us So, you know, no date. Um, I find about 90% uh, of the cartridges I have don't actually have a, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It says, uh, it's uh, basically a right of public performance sticker. And typically you have a uh, uh, date on when it was, you know, first issued and when it would be replaced. And about, I'd say 90% of them don't have anything written here. And this is no different. Uh, you can see to disassemble it's pretty pretty straightforward. You've got a uh, uh, three in each side, three screws, and it uh, comes straight apart. Let's take a look and see what. The... You notice the screws don't seem to drop out. Uh, I find that the ones that haven't been opened uh, tend to be nice and tight. Uh, screws are more difficult to get out of there. Um, but you notice that on the screw heads, they seem to have this, I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, they seem to have this brownish tinge on it. And uh, typically that tells me this came from an environment that, um, that was smoked in. Uh, it's not bad, you know, it's fixable, but it just, you know, that's kind of a, uh, indicative of the period. Everyone smoked in the 60s and 70s, it appears. And this one, unfortunately, is uh, no exception to that. I find the Christmas cartridges to be the cleanest because they're kept in the box most of, the, most of their life. And, um, you know, they, there we go. They typically, uh, they typically get played once a month and then they get put back in the box. So they're, they're the nicest. Um, so here we go. Take a look at it. It uh, comes up, comes apart in two halves. You can see it's just a big old quarter-inch tape reel with a uh, odd-sized spindle. And you can see right here it's where the uh, the braking mechanism just deteriorated. It's a bit like molten lava, uh, but we can clean that up. Tape appears to be, you know, intact. And uh, just kind of clean it up a little bit. And you can kind of see how the mechanism is. It's a almost a it's not a continuous loop, but it just uh, it just feeds from one side to the other, 
kind of passes it back through these uh, these rollers here and uh, back onto the other tape cartridge. Um, <clears throat> to get the other one out, now I found some differences in these cartridges is that in the later ones there seems to be a metal plate that's about here and this one doesn't have it. At some point I'll do a, uh, a video comparing the different cartridges and you know what cost cutting measures they've done in order to make these a little bit more I'd say easy to manufacture, you know, fix whatever problem they perceive the original cartridges to have. I find that the original 65, 66, you know, late 60s stuff tends to be a little bit more reliable than the plasticky, um, what is it, the plasticky uh, spooled uh, later 70s and uh, early 80s ones. Um, but <clears throat> here we go. This is the spring mechanism for the brake. We take that off it just disengages and obviously it's not hasn't been working you know probably 20 years and we take this screw out take this guy out and for those of you trying if you have one and you're thinking about taking yours apart there's only two different screw sizes you have the ones that hold the body together uh, these long guys and then you have a shorty so it's very straightforward and they interchange and this guy just lifts straight up, just watch the tape, and it's disassembled. Um, you have a roller here, I tend to wipe these down, uh, you know, just clean them up a little bit. You can see one side, it, it doesn't actually rotate, the tape just rubs against this nylon bush here. So I typically flip to the other side where it's nice and clean and, you know, smooth and nice. Um, <clears throat> on some of these, uh, the ones that I find disassembled, it looks like the original techs when they were servicing these things, when these would go bad, they would actually take one of the rollers on this side and they would actually take the stand, oh, excuse me. Um, some of these actually have a, uh, what we call it, a center that pushes out and they would actually replace this and put it here for some unknown reason. It's probably these went bad or, you know, who knows. Um, <clears throat> But the, the way this works is it sits on a post. You have your two, your two rollers, and they would actually be like this with your thick sides in the middle, and then you would have your washer in the center. There's also where the top one uh, rides on the bottom, and then you would have a bush that would, uh, excuse me, another washer that would sit on the very bottom, and then that would ride in a little, I'm not sure if you can see it here, it would ride in this little uh, molded spot for it. And on some of them there's grease in them or a very, very tiny amount of oil. And some of them there aren't and it doesn't seem to affect the, a, um, doesn't seem to affect the reliability of the tape. It just, that's just some one of their manufacturing changes that they've made uh, since they started making these. So now that this is a part, there's a few maintenance items that we have to take care of. One is it's very difficult to fix a brake. Usually I just scrape off the, you know, leftover, you know, clean it up just so it doesn't get on the tape. Oops. Clean up the tape spools here like this lava. And um, the most important thing I found for to make the tape run and as smooth and as consistent, consistent as possible is to actually take the clutch apart and you can see that both spools are identical. You've got a felt clutch pad on this one, and you got a felt clutch pad on this guy, and they're interchangeable. So you could flip this, and it would be no different than, you know, it would be no different than the way it came. And I find that if you've watched some of the videos, you can see that some of them have um, instability when they're playing. These plastic um, pads were the, the clutch felt rests have to be surgically clean. There can't be any specks like this. You know, this is breaking material. Um, and there can't be any nicotine on them because it, it's sticky. It, you know, it causes them to bind and do strange things. And that's for both sides, you know, top and bottom. And you can see that these only fit one way. There's a little, I'm, I'm not sure what that's called. There's a little place where the uh, top one fits into the bottom one and it just sits in, sits in place like that. Um, but these have to be surgically clean, no matter what, and that really improves the quality of the um, tape playback, you know, and maintain and allows for consistent speed when playing. 
Um, so to clean off the nicotine, what I use is, hold on one second. I use a little bit of uh, Goo Gone uh, adhesive remover and that just strips everything off the surface of the disc. And it actually makes it a little bit slippy, uh, excuse me, a little bit slippery. Um, and it just seems to help the, you know, help the tape play a little bit. And it keeps, and it makes it, you know, I'd say not surgically clean, but as clean as you're ever going to get it in a, in a home use environment. So uh, I'm going to pause this and uh, I'll be back with this cleaned up and uh, ready to assemble. All right, we're back and uh, it's cleaner. The centers are definitely the cleanest part, but you can see that um, like this guy, there's still a little bit of residue on the sides, but I don't like putting, you know, goo gone, especially near, near magnetic tape. I have no clue what it's going to do to it. And I just scrape off as much as I can. and just make sure that it's uh, free and clear for the tape to run and smooth. Um, so the tape doesn't bind as it goes around, but, um, there you go. It's, uh, clean. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And, uh, <clears throat> typically what I do is I take this guy apart. This is the first one that needs to be put down this little spindle here. I'll just casually wrap the tape around it. And just make sure it gets seated inside its little spot. It'll drop down. There we go. And then uh, put this guy back in. I've just removed the brake completely. Um, it's actually replaceable. There's a little clip that goes onto it and it holds a pad with the braking material. And I've just removed that. I find that the later tapes don't suffer the same problem as the earlier tapes do. The brakes seem to wear up, the brakes seem to go bad on the older tapes and the newer tapes. And then we'll go ahead and put this guy back together. For those of you uh, who are car buffs and know what a children's manual is, it's almost uh, the um, installation is reverse of removal, you know, the favorite phrase at the end. Brake mechanism is in place. I don't know if you actually need it, but um, I know it engages with a, um, with a uh, post in the, the actual player, and I'm not sure if it actually detects attention or who knows, so I just leave that there for functionality reasons. Um, and then at the end, when I'm done playing or I'm done or I'm storing these, I use a piece of blue tape just to tape the spools together. You know, on the inside, you can see where the tape goes, about right here, just to keep them together so it doesn't move. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put the the tape back, and we're just going to line it up with the two brackets here. It's going to line there. I've already cleaned this guy, so she's going back in. So, and then we just casually put this guy in and make sure we put this. Remember, the thick side is always going to be towards the middle, both the bottom and the top. So the bottom's going to look like this, and the top's going to look like this. And then make sure you put the washer back. So that's how the tape should look once it's ready to go. Then you can see how it spins, it pulls the tape from the bottom one, goes along the bottom, flips up, and then comes along the front face here, and then gets put back onto the other spool. And then once it comes to the end of the tape, it reverses, and the, and the opposite happens. And then we'll go ahead and put this in, and you can see on the front, this is sure if you can see the label. There we go. And then some of these still have the original caution sticker when inserting cartridge. Be sure both tapes are taut and go in between the two posts and that's on the actual player. I'm sure if you can see that. There we go. And then I'll put this back together like so. Mind you that there's a socket for the post to go in on the top side. And there we 
we go. We just pick it up like so. Put all the screws back in. Great of a job wiping it down on the bottom, but uh, there we go. And now we have one ready to go 3M Cantata tape. So I'll uh, be posting this up uh, once I get the once I get it all recorded. You know, all 26 hours or so <laughs> worth of it, and um, you know, then I have to a uh, uh, split it up in, among tracks. So it's uh, it's about what is it? Four hours, excuse me, six hours per per track, and then I uh, have to remove all the copyrighted content. Believe it or not, the copyright match on these things, especially the ones that are not generic um, background music, the ones that seem to have a melody to it, seem to get content match. And uh, depending on who the owner is, they're either going to be a dick about it or they're going to be reasonable. It depends. Um, so. Yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's typically what I do when I get a uh, 3M Cantata tape. When what all needs to go into it in order to get it playable and safe. And uh, that's it. Well, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, you know, I appreciate you watching this channel. A um, couple of couple of other things I'd like to uh, know your thoughts on. I have a uh, few other hobbies, whether it's um, old film cameras, uh, computers especially, and uh, even some car stuff. So let me know what you, let me know what you'd like to see. I've got a, a, a Mega 1000, and I've got an Atari ST burning a hole in the garage, and I've got a Plymouth Valiant, and uh, way too many cameras. So let me know what you'd like to see next. And uh, again, thanks for watching.